89.9 KMOJ. What's up, Twin Cities? It's your girl, Glam Life Kim, and you are now tuned in to Minneapolis 360 with yes, one indeed. of my favorite people in the Twin Cities. One of my favorite people in the Twin Cities is you, my sister. Mr. Anthony Taylor. How are you today, bro? I'm good, sis. How you doing? What's going on? You know what? I can't complain. Although it is a little gloomy outside, I'm just happy to be alive. I'm happy to... Yeah, you know Me, what I'm saying? Blessed to wake up in the morning. Man, God is good. I'm not complaining. But, but Mother Nature you're gonna get us though oh man don't start oh don't start I talking about that. snow is i that, don't want to hear is that it. bad energy oh my god yeah we, i don't we, hear we ain't gonna do that y'all Mm-mm. y'all know when we get on this man we talk about the weather i am not looking forward to it but i'm gonna try to embrace it right somehow some way y'all hey listen always my pleasure to be here every second and fourth uh wednesday of the month my name is anthony taylor i am from the city of minneapolis welcome to minneapolis 360 always a pleasure to ride with my girl shotgun, shotgun. <laughs> that's right we, we starting to feed each other sentences right. now man <laughs> hey y'all you can tell we family up in here man. man this is my sister glam life always a pleasure to see you sister same here always a pleasure one of the uh, best moments of my days is to come up here Aww, and, and, and ride with you this so half sweet. hour look so. i look forward to this too it's like we have good conversation we talk about different things yeah, that's happening yeah that's right some of it we be a little confused about right <laughs> right and sometimes you know the listeners be confused too so <laughs> hey, we, we gotta make it happen right we gotta make it happen but we we giving everybody information that's and right that's, important. that's right and listen minneapolis we are and i've been talking about this y'all for the last couple shows we are talking about cannabis y'all mm. on KMOJ. we got mm. a topic on weed Can marijuana Whatever you want what? to call it. When did you ever think you see this day? I, you know what? I, I didn't. <laughs> okay. I didn't. Yeah. Honestly, uh, Kim, you know, as Midwesterners are more conservative than other places throughout the country. Right. I did not think that the, the state of Minnesota. This fast. It, this fast. <laughs> yeah. The 26th state to be able to, to sell some uh, weed legally. Man. You know, I, I think with the House and the Senate, Governor Walls as a Democratic uh, president was able to push this through and it made it happen. Man, there's a lot of people that's happy. I'm I'm personally not a weed smoker, but there's a lot of people that are happy. There's a lot of people that are happy. Uh, there's a lot of confusion around mm. it. It mm-hmm. just really started August 1st, so I got two people that I'm going to put on to talk about it, y'all. We're going to kind of skip a little bit about the updates. If I got time later on in the show, I'll have uh, some updates for you, but I really want to get started with this conversation because I think it's important, y'all. And listen, as of August 1st, which passed, it is legal to have, sell, and use cannabis uh, or weed or marijuana, whatever you want to call it. I got two people on the line I want to talk to and have some really good conversations. And please call up with any questions, 612-377-3456. I got Marone Melikin from the Minnesota Office of Cannabis Management and Zotil from the small business team in the city of Minneapolis. Welcome to both of you to uh, Minneapolis 360. How y'all doing today? Yes. Uh oh. What's going on? How you got? Well, it looks like we got one of them here. Call back, sweetheart. Uh, I got to call back. No, not you, love. No. <laughs> is, this, is this Zoe or is this Marone? Uh, this is Zoe. Hey, Zoe, how you doing? We just uh, hung up on, I think, Marone. She's probably back on now. Yes. Marone, are you back? Yes. I'm back on. Are you guys able to hear me? Yeah, yes, we good. We, you, we good. Let's get it going. Welcome to both of you to Minneapolis 360. How you doing? Good. I'm doing well. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, so how, do some introductions, Marone. I'll have you go first, and then Zoe, you go uh, after Marone. Just tell us a little bit about you and what do you do for the uh, for the state of Minnesota. Absolutely. Thank you all. My name is Marone Melikin. I work for the Office of Cannabis Management here at the state of Minnesota, and my role is really around um, outreach and engagement. I um, came into the office about a month and a half ago and really looking forward to be able to share this information with community and to use community to help um, really implement um, this state agency as we move forward. Wonderful. Go ahead, Zoe. Yeah, so um, I'm the manager of the small business team in the city of Minneapolis, uh, which is part of our community planning and economic development group. And what my team does is we support small business owners and entrepreneurs and really looking forward to seeing how we can support uh, local businesses in this new industry. Yes, and thank you both for joining us. I have been teasing this subject for quite a while on the last couple of shows, so I really want to dig into it. Uh, and I'm going to start with you, Marone. Um, we know that 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 marijuana was legalized here August 1st. 
Um, we know it's kind of in its infancy stages, so we'll kind of talk a little bit about like, talk about the new law. Uh, what does it say about cannabis? What are people allowed to do? Kind of get into to, to digging into that a little bit as we get started. Yeah, um, I'll start off by just sharing a little bit about, like, when we say cannabis, um, it's a flowering plant, also known as marijuana, common um, recreational drug, but also, as folks know as well, it's used medicinally. Um, and so, um, as you had just stated, it was, um, the new law went effective on August 1st, 2023, um, which meant decrim- a full decriminalization. And that allows the possession, the use, the home grow of cannabis in Minnesota Um, with the caveat that it's for people 21 and older. And so that's something that we always want to emphasize. I think right off the bat, I do want to speak a little bit to um, what that means for our broader population as well. Um, It's important for communities to recognize that cannabis remains illegal at the federal level. And so it's important to move with caution as the federal law forbids the use of cannabis and can impact, you know, our undocumented or our non-citizens. Absolutely. And so it's best to always consult with a lawyer. It's best to always, you know, reach out to legal aid if and when um, people choose to consider using it or engaging in this new industry. And that's definitely it. Uh, go, yeah. go ahead, uh, Marone. Yeah, no, if you um, if, if you have some thoughts on that. Otherwise, I can speak a little bit to, like, kind of what people can and cannot do as well. But um, I think that's something that's just extremely important for people to know because, so many people were very excited about this new industry um, opening up, but it's it, it's very important to move with caution, especially um, when there are people um, that are at risk um, because it's not um, legal nationally yet. Yeah, absolutely, and I'm I'm glad you you said that about our undocumented brothers and sisters. So talk about like some of the the ins and outs, right? So how much I can possess, how much I can transport. Talk a little bit about that. Yeah, definitely. So. Um, what, the way that it's kind of outlined in a law, in the law is that a person 21 or older can use, possess, or transport can, uh, cannabis paraphernalia. So when you think about that, think of like the instruments um, that people utilize um, when um, utilizing marijuana or cannabis. Um, they can possess or transport up to two ounces of cannabis flower in public spaces. Um, they can possess up to two pounds of the cannabis flower in a person's private residence, so like at your respective home. Um, you can pre- possess or transport up to eight grams of adult use concentrate. Um, you can pre- um, possess or transport edible cannabis products, um, such as things like gummies and such, um, or lower potency hemp ed- edibles infused with combined 800 milligrams or less of THC, so that low dose. Um, and Another thing is that, like, you can give away cannabis flower and products to a person, but the caveat is that that person must be 21 years of age or, or older. Um, and it has to be in the amount that um, a person is legally able to possess in public. So um, that two ounces or less. And so these are just some of the things that people can w- essentially were allowed to begin doing. Yeah, I'm glad you talked about that. I, I, I've got a lot of questions, and I'm sure that um, our listeners do. If you want to call up and ask uh, Marone or Zoe about any questions that you have about cannabis, call up 612-377-3456, because I see a lot of gray areas in that, right? So, I, I and, and we'll have, uh, promise to have you, uh, you guys back on and come talk about it a little bit. But just to kind of make sure we clear or get a lot of this uh, information out. What's a what's a lot if a person wants to grow it at home, uh, Marone? Yeah, um, and this is definitely something that's of interest to a lot of folks right now. So a person can grow up to eight cannabis plants um, in their in their respective home um, with no more than four being mature at a single point in time. Um, and so the flowering. Um, of these has to be at like your primary residence of somebody that's 21 or older as well. One thing that I do want to emphasize is um, there's been a lot of questions around, well, what if I have an apartment? Um, It's important to clarify with your landlord or whomever owns that um, property, whether that's legal or not. And so they do have the jurisdiction to state whether folks can consume, whether you can grow within that space. And so um, when we talk about primary residence, think of that as a space that you own. Um, that is your single residence. Um, and when we think about apartments, recognize that there, there are other people that are part of um, that respective community. And so it's important to clarify that with um, a landlord. 
But um, another thing that I do want to share is that when it comes to these plants, they must be in, in an enclosed space, meaning it, can't, it has to be in a locked space that's not open for public viewing. Mm. Um, and so those are just some pieces to know when it comes to actually growing cannabis at your home. And if folks have more questions about this, um, our office is always willing to kind of answer about the kind of nitty gritty pieces of how that works. We are talking to Maroon Melican from the Office of Cannabis Management, talking about cannabis, the new law that legalized uh, cannabis August 1st. Uh, as we dig into it again, callers, if you want to call up and ask a question, 612 612- Three seven seven three four five six. All right, there, this is kind of the big question, right? That I hear a lot of folks talking about. Uh, Marone is like, where can I use cannabis, right? Like, like where can I, or where can I not mm-hmm. even use cannabis? So, talk a little bit about that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, this is a big one, um, and I think we're, we're going to realize slowly as I kind of share where you can and cannot that um, there there is some local control um, around this piece as well, um, but. So cannabis can be used by people 21 and older. I want to really emphasize that that age um, piece is really imperative when we talk about it and what the law says. Um, but it can be used on your private po- property, unless, of course, that owner prohibits it. So if we are talk- we are thinking about apartments, um, your landlord, they have jurisdiction over whether um, it can be utilized in that space or not. Um, so private um, residencies and at places with approved licenses or an event permit. Um, examples of this is, um, as of right now, we don't have any licenses for people to have events um, where cannabis can be consumed. But when we allow those licenses, um, there will be certain rules and regulations for how people can um, consume cannabis at particular events. As of right now, we, we don't allow that. Mm. Um, can't, cannabis can't be used when operating motor vehicles or like heavy machinery. So when we think about school buses. When we think about, you know, the people that are taking our children uh, to and from school every day, charter school buses, um, we do not allow the use of cannabis in those spaces. Um, correction, state correctional facilities, um, on federal properties such as courthouses, our airports, our national parks, um, in federal subsidized housing, it's, um, it's still not allowed. Um, on employer premises, um, on when operating, you know, employer um, vehicles or machinery or equipment, um, and these are also places that it's not allowed. Um, smoking or vaping adult use cannabis products is also prohibited in multi uh, family housing buildings. And so um, these are these are just really important things to recognize and to realize that it's it's imperative that you're constantly checking in, such as if there are landlords, if there are owners of the particular places that people are either attending or living in, double and triple checking with them what their specific policies are, um, because that can kind of make or break whether um, you are able to consume in those spaces. Um, And to the point about um, local ordinances, um, this is um, communities may have their own local ordinances that prohibit smoking or vaping um, cannabis in public spaces. And so I think it's always important um, to recognize that the state has its rules, um, but the cities um, and the local um, areas have their own um, kind of jurisdiction over how they want to um, enforce that. So, Marone, I just want to clarify. You said cannabis cannot be used when operating a motor vehicle. Does that mean that you cannot smoke and drive and you also cannot get high than drive. Right. Or that is me- correct. Okay, right. both are right. correct. Both are. Yeah. So for y'all, we smokers that are listening, <laughs> I just want to make sure that I clarified right. that so you'll yeah. understand what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. potentially, if you're driving and you get pulled over and you smell high or you look high, your eyes is red or they really low, you could potentially get a ticket. Right. That's correct, right, Maroon? Oh, sorry. Um, yeah, so th- that that is potentially. And I do want to kind of reiterate that, like, in the, what the state is doing is th- the state doesn't want to create more um, policing and more um, harm back into community. But, the, but really the intent here is that we're ensuring that people are um, doing these things safe and that they are, um, that they're, completely kind of cognizant of all of the areas that like potentially like impairment and such um, may impact them. And so the idea is that we want 
people that choose to um, to consume in safe um, spaces and in not ways that um, could potentially impair them. Yeah, Wonderful. A- a- absolutely. And, and thank you for that, Kim. I, I think we want to make sure we clarify the do's and, and mm-hmm. don'ts. And some of the same rules still apply right, right before. Yeah. Uh, one of the things I want to do is I want to bring the city's perspective in. Zotil with the small business team uh, to our show. She's been waiting patiently to, to get on it. <laughs> Uh, Zoe, talk about just what Minneapolis is doing to prohibit smoking and, and, and vaping cannabis publicly. Yeah. So, you know, one thing that is the same in Minneapolis as everywhere else in the state of Minnesota is that you cannot smoke or vape indoors. So the Indoor Clean Air Act, which, you know, prohibits you from smoking cigarettes indoors, applies to cannabis as well. Um, so if you go out to a bar or restaurant, um, there's there's no smoking or vaping indoors for sure. Yeah, absolutely. Go ahead, Zoe. Yeah, and um, the the state law does allow um, cities and other municipalities to uh, adopt additional rules around outdoor smoking and vaping. At this point, uh, the city of Minneapolis has not implemented any additional restrictions on smoking cannabis outdoors. So in general, if it's a place where you can legally be smoking tobacco, um, you're generally going to be um, okay with uh, smoking or vaping cannabis uh, with the additional uh, restrictions that uh, Marone mentioned, and in particular, not um, near uh, near kids. Right. And you have to be smart about it. And I'm glad you said that. And that makes perfect sense. I mean, if you can you know, smoke a cigarette in places you probably can consume marijuana in those same places. And and, and Minneapolis, just be smart about this too, right? I mean, I, I think uh, with a lot of these rules and regulations still being built out, different municipalities having different rules, just really, uh, we'll have some information on different websites that you can call to make sure that you are able to be informed uh, around this. And, and as we, we talk about uh, going back to the state's perspective, uh, Marone, um, we talk about like regulation, right? And being able to uh, regulate this, this industry and knowing that kind of this stuff still has to be uh, built out, uh, so to speak. Just, just talk about how the state's going to be able to regulate this new industry. Because honestly, if you think about it, this, and for some people who've been tracking it a while, it hasn't, but it kind of snuck up and went on us fast. Correct. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, definitely. Um, So, The first step I will just say is we formed the office that I'm currently working in right now, which is the Office of Cannabis Management. Um, I'm on the implementation side, but it's really in, um, firstly, creating this office and um, creating all of the processes and procedures so that we can be an effective office that can serve um, the state of Minnesota. Um, But essentially, our office will regulate cannabis, so that'll include the adult use market, the med- eventually the medical cannabis program, um, and for lower, lower potency hemp edibles. Um, so our office will essentially be the office that creates the rules and regulations, um, begins to issue licenses, and develop the, um, the regulations outlining how and when businesses can officially participate in this industry. And so I just want to kind of emphasize that piece is that it's, um, you know, August 1st happened, but it, for us, when it came to the actual regulation and it came to like, you know, um, businesses being open and being able to open up yet, that didn't happen on August 1st. That is the process of our office is to create that, um, create the, um, rules and regulations and the licensing structure and such so that, um, individuals that want to partake in this industry will be able to go through that process, um, efficiently and effectively. And so, essentially, it's, it's really us. We're the, um, we at the state are the ones that are going to build this, and we're going to work collectively with our partners um, in local government and all of our um, community allies and stakeholders um, to ensure that this goes well. So, will this impact the, the state's medical marijuana program? No. So, the goal right now is that the state's medical marijuana program will still um, continue it as is. It's currently within the Minnesota Department of Health. Um, Minnesotans can continue to sign up for the program through the Department of Health um, Medical Cannabis um, website. Um, further down the road, um, meaning like over a year or so from now, um, the idea is that this program will come into the Office of Cannabis Management. But as of right now, we don't want to um, 
mess with that structure whatsoever um, until we're in a place for it to migrate over. Okay, yeah, no, that, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm glad you answered that question. Talking to Maroon uh, Melican from the Office of Cannabis Management, we've got a couple minutes, Minneapolis, if you want to ask questions, 612-377-3456. And, and, and Maroon, this is another question that I'd, I'd really like you to kind of address. You know, people heard that uh, you know, selling weed or, or, or cannabis was legal and everybody want to set up shop, right? Everybody is ready to get a cannabis business, you know, not really understanding the fees and the licensing. So, like, talk about how people can legally join the cannabis industry and start a business uh, in our great state. Absolutely. And this that excites me. I'll say that because we want people to join this industry. We want Minnesotans. We want this to be homegrown. We want um, we want that level of excitement. But I do want to share that um, similar to what I said earlier, August 1st happened, but that didn't mean that folks were able to open up shop right away. So our office, um, OCM, will essentially release applications, will issue the licenses, and will develop the regulations for how businesses can operate and participate in this industry. Where we're at right now is that we um, are a new state agency, and so we have to develop that framework um, for the legal adult um, use cannabis. Um, and the way that we do that is through rulemaking. This is essentially a process that um, allows us to create timelines. It allows us to create, um, really go deeper into the bill and figure out how exactly will people be able to gain licenses and what where, where are the gray areas that we didn't maybe um, address in the bill that we need to so that we can actually implement a process for people to be able to enter this industry fair and equitably. So we're going to do that. And we're, our goal is that by early 2025, people will have issue, will have applications available so that people can issue, uh, so that we can issue licenses. So as of right now, stay on hold, you know, continue to kind of build what you're thinking for your future business. But by the early 2025, will be um, available to go and um, uh, issue licenses, essentially. Yeah, yeah absolutely. In, in Minneapolis, I mean, this is still getting built out if you're hearing what Marone is, is talking about. And yep. I, got, I, got a, I got a quick question, follow up to that, and I'll bring you on, Zoe, to talk about the city and licenses. But uh, Marone, how much of an example have you guys followed from different states to kind of build this out? Definitely. So we are, there are, as you know, like we, we aren't the first state. Um, we have been reaching out to everyone from um, folks in New York to Maine to Colorado to really learn about what went well and like where did things fall apart. Um, and so thankfully we have a lot of great models to learn from, um, a lot of successes and challenges. And um, as Minnesota, we want to make sure that we are standing right by community, that we're reducing harm, that we are um, reinvesting in community and really that's ultimately the goal and I think that's we're hoping to be a model for future states if they so choose to um, to uh, legalize. Now uh, Zoe I want to bring you back in Zoe uh, Teal from the small business team uh, where uh, Zoe would it be a, a city of Minneapolis license or will there be a city of Minneapolis license? There will not so in this for this particular industry, all of the business licensing is going to take place at the state level. Um, local uh, municipalities, so cities are going to have a registration process um, so that we know where the cannabis businesses are within the city, but all of the applications and approvals will happen with the state. And where will licensed cannabis stores be allowed? Well, as with a, a lot of other things in this, uh, with the implementation, that's a work in progress. Yeah. yeah so the, <laughs> yeah. Uh, the, the law does allow for cities to set zoning and other sort of location guidance for cannabis businesses. The city of Minneapolis will be doing that, and we expect to have um, those policies in place by the middle of 2024. Um, and, at, and at that point, folks would know um, whether or not a particular retail location they're considering is going to be zoned appropriately for, for it. Um, and in the process, we will be getting feedback from Minneapolis residents, businesses, property owners, and others about how we do that. Yeah, absolutely. In Minneapolis, I mean, if you're listening, the theme is hold tight, hold on, you know, until things get built out, you'll be able to get all that uh, information when it starts to get built. So I want both of you as we uh, push up against the clock with our last two minutes, uh, and I'll start with you, uh, Zoe. Where can folks get information uh, around the city of Minneapolis about cannabis laws? 
Yeah, so uh, the first thing I would do is point them right back to the state. So the Office of Cannabis Management has a fantastic website, cannabis.mn.gov. The city uh, does also have a page up. For folks who are interested in um, entrepreneurship, who are thinking about business in this area and want to talk to somebody on the small business team, they can reach out to us at smallbusiness at minneapolismn.gov or 612-673-2499. Um, can also call uh, 311 um, with more general questions. Yeah. And Marone, I'd like to give you the last word. Cannabis laws, what do you want to leave us with? Yeah, just reiterate, reach out to us. We want to engage with community. We plan to, um, you know, have a very robust um, engagement effort, um, especially over the coming months. And so we're excited about this. We are excited about um, really reinvesting um, into community. And looking forward to continuing to um, be able to join this call and share more information about where we are in the process. Yeah, and I want to thank you both for coming on. I mean, we could talk about this for a while. There's a bunch more questions I think I'd love to answer and, and or get answered. And I think a lot of uh, information folks uh, in our city would love to hear. I would love to bring you both back uh, in the future several more times as things get built out and, and more answer those questions to come back on it and, and talk to the community. Does that sound okay to you guys? Absolutely. That would be fantastic. Yeah, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys, both. Have a great rest of your day. Thanks for having us. You're welcome. All right. Yeah, Yeah, Kim, I mean, it's it's real. There's so many questions. What questions did you got? I know you got some in your head right now. You know what? I I just want to say that I'm, you know, I'm happy for one that we definitely talked about this because it's important. There's a lot of people, especially our young people, who, you know, are so happy that this has been made legal. However, they feel like, oh, now they can just go anywhere (laughs) and smoke and they can drive and smoke. And so I just think. And then uh, the other thing is, I think, legally having the buildings, like if you go to Vegas or anywhere else where you can purchase it legally, I prefer that if you're going to purchase it at all over just buying it off the street and you never know what you're going to get. Because this this past summer, quite a few people died just from... You know, people lacing, yeah. you know, the cannabis with fentanyl. And so, uh, you know, I'm just scared for our babies. So I just want to make sure at least if y'all going to smoke it, buy it the right way. And, right. Yeah. you know, no, let's I, make sure that everybody is safe. Absolutely. I, I 100% agree. One of the things I know we got to get out of here. One of the things that I'm really excited about is just the entrepreneurship. Entrepreneurship. Yep. Ship. There uh-huh. you go. Entrepreneurship. You know, and, and how mm-hmm. folks are going to activate and, and become mm-hmm. entrepreneurs. Mm-hmm. You know, I think that's going to be a beautiful thing when mm-hmm. that happens. Yeah. I'm also interested in where those tax dollars go and what they do. <laughs> right. It's going it, to be raining. <laughs> yeah, money going to be raining around here. So what, what are those tax dollars doing for community? You right. know what I'm saying? Yes. I really want to know what a- that is. We want to see it. So we going to put pressure. We oh, got to put man. pressure on them. We got to make sure that man. these dollars is going yeah, back into going the community. Yeah, going back into the community because it's going to be a lot of money. Yeah. yeah. So okay, come right. on. Yeah. I need to get in on the. <laughs> I mean, your entrepreneurial <laughs> you spirit is so dumb. right, right. <laughs> already over there Let taking mental in, notes. Right. <laughs> Good to see you, sister. You too. One love, kings and queens. Until next time. <laughs>